Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, and Astainahu, and Astar Firu. When I was a belay in Shururi and Fusina, women say Ati Amalina. When Yahdilla for Lamudilla, Woman Yudlil for La Hadilla, was Shirola Ila Hilla, who Wahta Hula Shari Gala, was Shirola Muhammadan Abduhu or Sulu. يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل واحسن حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في دين بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار. All praises and thanks is due to Allah عز وجل. We praise Him and we extol Him and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and evil results of our wrong actions. Whomsoever Allah guides can be never left astray, and whomsoever Allah allows to be left in misguidance, there is no guide for that individual. Verily. The most truthful of speech is the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, and every newly invented matter in Islam is a bidah, a going astray, and every bidah leads to the hellfire. That's the al-afiyah. As what follows, my dear brothers in Islam, today we would like to speak about the importance of developing good habits in Islam, the importance of developing good religious moral habits, inshallah. 
and that a lot of us are not aware, but all of the deeds in general that we do in this life are clinging and are attached to our necks like a bird. So, we Muslims, alhamd, as Allah has made us khulafa al-ard, the vicegerents on this earth, must start to purify ourselves and start to reach inside within our inner regions of our heart and look into our perception. And we should now have come to understand that Jannah is for the muttaqin. And that Allah Azawajal had blessed us and given us the hidayah and to serve as a guide for mankind. So, even if we have become somewhat unaware of those facts, we should have now been able to understand a lot more about life and our deen from study of Islam. So, every sincerely practicing Muslim has realized that we need to do a little bit more than what we're doing right now if we expect to get Jannah. Because Jannah is the gift, the greatest gift of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this comes about by us being in the habit or training ourselves to be in the habit to do good deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal says about Jannah, Jaza'un min rabbika ata'un hisaba. That Jannah is the reward, is a, is a great and tremendous reward from Allah Azza wa Jal for, out of His mercy, for what we have done habitually. So those of us who truly believe in Allah Azza wa Jal as our Lord, they have also come to realize that those deeds that we do on a regular basis, those things that we do regularly will leave an impression on our hearts and our minds. And the hearts and minds of those people who we come into contact with on a regular basis. So this is what we like to have as the focal point of our khutbah today is that it is important for us to be in a habit or become habitual in doing good deeds continuously. And it is this type of habitual human nature which would lead us to either Jannah or Nar. So we have to try and train ourselves to be in a habitual nature to do good deeds. With that said, there's a Sahih Hadith which has been collected in the Sunan of Abu Dawood and the authority of Abu Hurairah Anhu that the Prophet Sallallahu he said that the first thing, awwal shay, the first thing that we will be held accountable for on the day of judgment is our Salah. Our Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal, he will say to his angels to go and check my slaves, and see how their salah is. If their salah is complete, or is their salah lacking? And if our salah is lacking, the Allah Azza wa Jal will say to the angels, having known very well about his slaves, look and see if he has some optional prayers to add to that which is lacking of his far prayers. And then make up for the lack in his far prayers from his optional prayers. And the rest of our deeds will be also counted similarly. So that, with that hadith, with that thought in mind, this is the first thing that Allah Azawajal will look upon. And this is the first thing that we should be continuously, regularly concerned about if we want to develop a religious habit. Also, there's a hadith which has been collected in the Sahih of Bukhari and Muslim and the thought of Abu Ridh Anhu, that he said, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu saying to his Sahaba, if there was a river in front of the door of your home, and we were to go through it and bathe in it five times a day, 
would there any dirt remain on your body? They said, of course not. There would not be any dirt. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, this is the example of the five daily prayers. That if we are in the constant habit of praying regularly, then Allah Azawajal would blow out and remove and cleanse us of our sins. Like there no dirt remains on a body after they wash themselves. And also there's another hadith, especially for our brothers, that a great emphasis has been placed on the praying of Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Asr. Because these are the time periods of the day where all of the angels meet. The angels of the day and the angel of the night, they meet and they take the deeds up to Allah Azawajal. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu said, which is also a proof that Allah Azawajal is not everywhere. He is up. That the Prophet Sallallahu said that a group of angels stay with us at night. And a group of angels spend with us time during the daytime. And both groups, they meet at the time of Asr and Fajr. Then those angels who have stayed with us during the night, they send up to Allah. Yes, ah, ilallah. They ascend. They go up quickly to Allah Azawajal. And then Allah Azawajal asks them about us. After having very well, good knowledge about our condition, and Allah Azawajal asked the angels, how? Kef al ibad. How did you leave my slaves? The angels will reply that we had left them while they were praying, and we reached them while they were praying. So, this is also a very, very important proof, especially for the men, that we should be in a regular habit of establishing our prayers five times a day, but more so the Salat al-Fajr and the Salat al-Asr in the Masjid in Jama'ah. As the Prophet Sallallahu he said, whoever establishes the Salat al-Subh, Fajr, in the Jama'ah, in the Masjid, that the person who establishes, it's his habit to establish the Salat al-Fajr in the Masjid, then he will be under the safekeeping, the protection of Allah Azawajal for that day. There's also hadith which has been collected in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, Imam Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Nisai, and Ibn Majah, by way of Burda Ibn Hasib, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu say, Al-Aqf, Bainana wa Baina Rajal, Al-Salah, Man Taraka Faqad Kafar, that the constitution or the agreement between us and them is the prayer, the salah. Whoever leaves the prayer, who abandons the prayer, has become a kafir. And what is meant here by kuf or disbelief is the kind of kuf which takes a person outside the middle of Islam. So this is the Prophet Sallallahu he made this fine line between kuf, belief, and disbelief by the person who intentionally leaves off the prayer. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. So the very first thing, my dear brothers in Islam, that we all need to make a habit of is our salah. Since our prayer is the first and the best and the purest of deeds which go to Allah Azza wa Jal. After all of our religious deeds will be checked, the first, the best, and the purest of all of our religious deeds is our salah. So we also, in general, in generally speaking, we should not dismiss the importance of the small deeds, the small deeds that we can do every day. For example, saying hello, smiling in the face of your Muslim brother, as the Prophet Sallam said that, yeah, and he's smiling in the face of your Muslim brother is a sadaqah, is a charity. We can be kind to people, we can help our neighbors, Muslim or non-Muslim, and we can smile to people in general, and the list goes on. There's so many things that we can do. As Allah says, 
Whoever comes with a good deed, then Allah will give them much more in its place. So with this said, my dear brothers in Islam and Iman, we need to understand that it is very important for us to have a love to be in the habit of doing good deeds regularly and habitually every day. This is something which will help us to remove the evil deeds and to get us into Jannah, bidnillah, azawajal. Because just sticking to the basics and holding on to the bare minimum isn't enough. Because it is highly likely that we are lacking in some aspects of our salah and our daily routine of doing good things. So we have to try and do some other good things so as inshallah we'll have to wipe out or to replace the mistakes in our regular habitual good habits. We had mentioned at the beginning that all of our deeds are connected to us, to our necks, like a bird. Allah says in his book, Allah says, And we have made every person's actions to cling to their necks, and we will bring them to him on the day of resurrection in the form of a book, which will, we will find wide open in front of us. And then it will be said to us, Iqra kitabik, read your book. Sufficient, enough will be us as a witness over ourselves on that day. So here Allah Azawajal has described very plainly in this ayah, in many places in the Quran, that all of our deeds, good and bad, good and bad, those that we like and those that we don't like people finding out about, are clinging to our necks, are holding to on, onto us, and clinging to our necks like a bird. Allah says that He has fastened our deeds to our necks. And this word, ta'ira, bi'unaqi, it literally means something which clings, and also refers to something which clings and flies away quickly. As Ibn Abbas, Mujahid, and others have said that, this includes both our good and our bad deeds, which we will be forced to acknowledge on that day. And we will be rewarded and punished accordingly. So the seriousness of this ayat implies from this verse that on the day of judgment, on the day of final judgment, the actual good and bad deeds will be presented before us in the form of a well-numbered book. On that day, as eloquent as we are in this life and speaking, or dramatically speaking, it will have no avail for us on that day. Because Allah Azawajal will also reveal our hidden characteristics. Those things that we love to deny. That people sometimes and usually are able to find out and become aware of or slightly aware of in this life, but on that day we will not be able to run away or deny our hidden agendas or our hidden motives behind doing what we do. So we would not be separated from our hidden agenda or our hidden motives as much as we'd love to flee away or run away as this ayat refers to fly away, like the bird flies away, it will be clinging to us. Like a bird, how it clings on to a branch. It will be clinging to us. And it will be presented before us, our deeds. So, it will be useless for us on that day to escape it. But now, my dear brothers in Islam, is the time. This is the time. This is the opportunity that we have in this life to rectify ourselves. Because on that day, there will be no escaping our deeds that we have done, which we will not be able to deny with our own hands, good or bad. 
and our hidden agendas and our hidden motives will be all made plain and apparent for us to see. All the good and bad that we have done and we have committed will be recorded in our scroll of deeds. Even the smallest of good or bad deeds will be made plain for us to see. And when we see this sight, we'll be shocked at the accuracy of the sight and the numbers of our deeds on that day. So my dear brothers in Islam and Iman, we have the opportunity now to do, and we have the opportunity now to correct and rectify our good deeds. Because this life is the life of planting the seeds of righteousness and piety. So let us now, right now, stop fooling ourselves. Because it's easy to fool the world or to fool other people. But we cannot fool ourselves. Maybe we have fooled ourselves by drowning ourselves in guilt or whatever we want to do to hide what we know about ourselves. But on that day, there will be no hiding. There will be no hiding. So, and there will be no excuses. So let us now stop making excuses before we become sick, before we become incapable of doing good deeds. So now is the time for us to develop those good religious habits. As Allah says in that straightforward ayat, فَمَا مَنْ ثَقْلَتْ مَوَازِينُ هُوَ فَعِشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ وَمَا مَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُ فَأُمَّهُ هَاوِيَةٍ Allah says, Whosoever makes their deeds heavy, who, whosoever makes their deeds heavy in this life, this is the time, then they will have a good life in the next life. And those of us who choose to make their deeds and their scales light, then they will be in the nar, the hellfire. So may Allah make it easy for us to do those deeds which Allah loves and is pleased with. Amen. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah, wa ala alihi wa sallam wa tabi huda wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman, <clears throat> if we can understand with our sensory perception, which Allah wa has given us, the senses and our sensory perception, or if we have come to understand through research and studying of our deen, that when the day of judgment comes, when we are going to stand in front of Allah and our scrolls of our deeds will be laid and put in front of us and will be given to us, at that time, we will be told by Allah Azawajal, Iqra kitabik, kifab nafsika al yom alayka hasiba. Allah Azawajal will tell us all plainly, read your book. It will be sufficient enough for you to be a witness for or against ourselves. So, with that said, a lot of us have personal problems with one another. Some of us have disagreements, some big, but most of them are petty problems, petty issues, small disagreements. It is better for us to solve our petty disagreements with a scholar, a scholar who is well grounded in the Quran and Sunnah with a correct understanding of the book. We don't want to bring these petty differences in front of Allah. As we mentioned at the very beginning of a khutbah, each and every sane Muslim can understand through his or her senses or have come to understand through studying even a little bit of the deen that Jannah is not cheap. Jannah is a gift of Allah for those who are muttaqun. And in the same way, all of our good and bad deeds that we have committed in this life will be made laid plain for us to see. No matter how large or how small the deeds may be, they will be made plain for us to see. So, and the effects of what we do in this life, they have made a stain on our hearts. Everything that we do in this life, the effects of it is recorded on our hearts so that we will understand. We understand that it becomes now second nature to us. What we're doing right now habitually is now becoming a stain or leaving a mark on our hearts so that now we'll become habitually. 
it will be our habit to do these good or bad deeds. So, we have to learn, or we have to teach, we have to train ourselves to be habitual, just like we teach or we want to train small children, how they are taught, how are children taught. They are taught and they are trained gradually so that things will become part of their true nature. Sometimes we need to punish them. Sometimes we need to discipline them. And a little training and education, it must come gradual. It must become a gradual, through a gradual process until it becomes absorbed into us as our nature. So we have to educate and we have to absorb this type of training gradually into ourselves so it becomes our nature. This is what we have to do. There is no difference, my dear brothers in Islam, when it comes to learning or studying the deen so that we become habitual in doing good religious practices. We have to start gradually doing these things. And the first thing that Allah will ask us about is our salah, our prayer. Let us make this a habit. We can start with the Salatul Sub and Salatul Asr. Fajr and Asr. Let us start making this a regular habit. And the best way, one of the best ways to achieve being habitual and doing good deeds is removing animosity, hatred, rancor, and kibber. Kibber, pride from our hearts. Because this is the key and this is the, the root of all evil deeds is kibber, pride. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يدقل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر وقام قال صلى الله عليه وسلم that they will not enter paradise the person who has even an Adam's weight an Adam's weight of pride in the heart why isn't it that people are not able to do these small deeds regularly or habitually Allah knows best but we have to search within ourselves and find out do we have kibber? Are we too arrogant? Are we too puffed up to do these things? Are we too proud to stand with the general people? So this is one hadith. And the Prophet Sallallahu said that there is in each and every one of us a mudgha, a piece of meat, a piece of flesh. If it is good, then all of our body is good. If it is corrupt and bad, then our whole body will be bad. He said that is the heart. So if we keep our hearts clean and pure and free from corruption and free from deceit and deception, then our whole body will be good. Everything else will be good. But we have to train ourselves. We have to make the effort to actually take the steps, the necessary steps in purifying ourselves. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla will ask us and we will be told to read our books ourselves. And our hidden motives and agendas, they will be made clear and clean for us to see on that day. As the Prophet Sallallahu said in this noble hadith, that we will be asked about our hearts. Allah says that Allah does not look in Allah, that Allah does not look at our, our bodies, our shapes, but He looks at our hearts and our deeds, our amal. So now, no matter how good we believe or we feel we have done things, Allah is going to scan our hearts. That's why we have to try and do a little bit more, a little bit more to make up for those things that might have some lack in it, might have some showing off in it, might have some riya in it, showing off, as the Prophet said that, this is the, the thing that Allah is worried, that the Prophet is worried most from this ummah. Is that riyah, showing off and doing good deeds? So perhaps some form of showing off has crept into our good deeds that we do regularly. So as to remove this, we have to try and do some other deeds to make up for those things which have crept into our good deeds. I would like to leave us off with a hadith that inshallah, can help us to keep our hearts clean. One day, the Prophet ﷺ was in the masjid, sitting with a group of his companions. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said that, 
The next person who comes through that door is a person from Jannah. It's going to be one of the people of Jannah. A man came in. The next day, the same thing the Prophet ﷺ, while he was sitting with his companions, he said, the next person who comes through that door is a person of Jannah. The same man came in. And the third day, the same thing happened. So then, Abdul bin Amr bin As, he wanted to find out what was so special about this Sahabi. Unknown Sahabi. Unknown. So he made an excuse to this Sahabi and he said that, I want to spend some time with you. I would like to spend a few days. I have some problems at home. I want to spend time with you. So he stayed with him for three days. He slept with him. He stayed at his home and he ate with him. And he said he did not find anything special about this companion. He did not do any extra fast. He did not pray so long in the night. Most of the time he would sleep and he would pray little at night. So after three days, Abdullah, he couldn't contain himself anymore. And he said to him, I was not completely honest in my request to stay with you for three days, for these days. But I wanted to find out because the Prophet ﷺ said that you are a person of paradise. I wanted to find out what is it that you do? What deed that you do that makes the Prophet ﷺ say this about you? That great unknown Sahabi, he said, I cannot think of anything that I do out of the ordinary except that every night before I go to sleep, I search my heart. I search my heart and I find out if anyone has wronged me and I forgive him. Before I put my head on my pillow to sleep, I make sure that I do not have any animosity in my heart, any ill feelings in my heart against any Muslim brother, and then I put my head on the pillow and I go to sleep. So Abdullah ibn Abdul asked, he said that this is something that is very, very tremendous, very great indeed. So may Allah Azza wa Jal help us to purify our hearts. Tahir qalubana. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us and purify our hearts from all of the rancor and hatred and distrust for each other. Because these are some of the deeds that cause our hearts to not do other good deeds. May Allah Azza wa help us purify our hearts and purify our deeds to make them pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Amin, amin, amin. Inna Allah wa malaikatu ya saluna ala nabi. Ya aladheena amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallam tasliman. Alhumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. Alhumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. Rabbana aatina fi dunia hasana. Wa afrakna wa akhirna dhabana. Wa aqimu salat.